December football, here we come. Rossi Posse Packer Nation. Welcome to an episode of Packers, the podcast where you don't study Packers fan, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom. Please let the Dolphins think it's December football on Thanksgiving so they still lose, please. Grassi. And today we are going to be breaking down and ranking the top 10 teams heading in to week 13 of the NFL season. We got a whole bunch of NFL action coming this week, including three Thanksgiving games and, of course, the Black Friday game as well with whoever the Raiders QB is going to be. Also, a big shout out to the NFL for allowing me to use some highlights this week to illustrate some of the better plays that some of these teams made. And week 12 was absolute pandemonium. I would think as we head into December, this is going to get a little bit easier. And for the most part, in the top two, there haven't been too many changes. But below that, a litany of changes in the top 10 because teams had dramatic losses. You had the Vikings going into overtime with the freaking Bears. You had the Commanders losing to the Cowboys, the Strouds losing to the Titans. And so after a wonky week 12, it is finally time to attempt to rank these top 10 teams. And before we get to that, I want to do an honorable mention shout out. Chargers, you were in the top 10, but you don't go there anymore because you lost pretty badly to the Ravens. My honorable mention is to a team that does not have a winning record. I shouted out the Dolphins last week, and that's looking even better as they were able to knock off the Patriots this week, and their offense is looking great. But this team that I want to shout out is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And yes, they beat the New Jersey Giants, who are arguably one of the worst teams, if not the worst team in football right now. But the way the Buccaneers have been playing this season, with all of their injuries, their defense not so great, and at times their coaching is not ideal. Baker Mayfield is just a straight up baller. Mike Evans came back on Sunday and that is going to be a huge boost for that offense. And taking a look at the NFC South, which is a struggling division. I like the Buccaneers right now and also them running the ball with Bucky Irving. They might be able to still win that division. They're going to need the Falcons to drop a couple games. The Falcons, I don't really have a lot of faith in right now. And so I wanted to give a shout out to the Buccaneers. They have it in front of them. Can they make the push into the postseason? We'll see. And if not, then Tommy DeVito will have his revenge. Starting off with number 10, because you got to put somebody from that division in here. You got the Seattle Seahawks representing the NFC West. The Cardinals coming out of their bye, even though their offensive line apparently thought they were still on their bye, losing to the Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks didn't allow a single touchdown. Kyler Murray running for his life. And on top of that, the Cardinals, they were able to get after Geno Smith as well because the Seahawks offensive line is not great. But the Seahawks defense, that was the story of this game. My Mike McDonald's work is not going unnoticed, and look who finally found their defense. Echo base, this is rope two. I found them. Repeat, I found them. And the NFC West is just a circling pile of mid right now, in which the 49ers, they're banged up. The Rams, they got dominated by the Eagles. And it's really coming down to the Cardinals and the Seahawks. I still don't completely give up on the Rams, but there's not a ton to be confident about right now, especially on that offensive line. And taking a look at Seattle, they have issues too. We talked about their offensive line. Their running game is tough to get going. But that defense, if it could take the next step and it played really well on Sunday, then the Seahawks could wind up winning that division. They got a few tough games left, including a Sunday night game against the Green Bay Packers coming up. But if they're able to remain healthy and find their run game, which should be very capable with some good running backs, the Seahawks might be able to steal this division. And so because of that, I'm putting them at number 10. Do I have a lot of confidence in any of these teams? No, but Seahawks... You made the power rankings. Number nine, you got the Green Bay mother-loving Packers. Welcome back to the power rankings. After decimating the already decimated San Francisco 49ers and Packers fans, we've been waiting a while to do this. Of course, it's already known that the 49ers were missing a ton of their stars heading into this game. Trent Williams, Brock Purdy, and Nick Bosa did not play on Sunday. 
But I want to talk about the Green Bay Packers on defense and, of course, their run game. Their defense getting three takeaways, two fumbles, and also an interception. Another by Xavier McKinney, making seven on the year. And the offense, Jordan Love did not throw any interceptions, though there was one that was very, very close. But Josh Jacobs had a three-touchdown day and over 100 yards. The first player at Lambeau to do that for the Packers since 1999 and good old Dorsey Levens. And this is the reason why the Packers brought in Josh Jacobs. You can hand him the rock over and over and over again, and he's going to grind down opponents. And he did so on Sunday. The Packers really dominated that fourth quarter, and the Packers put together a really complete game. They're going to have four primetime games back to back to back to back coming up. Of course, the first one being on Thursday night on Thanksgiving against the Miami Dolphins, who are looking real good on offense right now, so I think it's going to be a battle on Thursday. But right now, the Packers are playing well enough to get a spot in the top 10. We'll see if that consistency can continue heading into December. And yeah, Toyota Thon Jordan Love continues. Number eight, you got the Denver Broncos. The Broncos. It wasn't pretty, but they got the job done, sweeping the Raiders, getting their first win in Vegas since the Raiders went there. And listen, Bo Nix, we're starting to believe even more. The defense of the Broncos, of course, being a highlight there. And even though the Broncos are dealing with some injuries right now, they are just a feisty football team. And honestly, if they keep playing like this, they're getting closer and closer to ending that playoff drought. I can almost taste it. Cortland Sutton was a standout in that game as they really couldn't get the run game going whatsoever. And I know Gardner Minshew got injured during that game. But the Broncos, like I said, their defense has been really damn good throughout the season. Their secondary is just a monster. And honestly, the way the Broncos are playing, I would be a little bit shocked at this point if they don't make a wild card spot. And I know that might be an outrageous thing to say, but considering the AFC is so top heavy, they are definitely in control of their own fate right now, still holding a wild card spot. And it'll be really interesting to see how they finish out the year. They got some division games coming up, including a rematch against the Kansas City Chiefs. We'll see how the Broncos are going to finish things up, but right now, they're coming in at number eight, and who knows? We might be seeing a Broncos playoff game after all. Number seven, you got the purple incarnation of Satan, the Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings, woof, that was a close one after making fun of the Packers that, oh, we only won because of a blocked field goal. Look who went into overtime with them. And the Bears, they made a miraculous comeback. And then they remembered that they'd be helping the Packers if they wound up winning. Stop it! He's got my money! Thanks. What the hell's the matter with you? You let him go! The one time I want the Bears to frickin' frack and win. And the Vikings really haven't had decisive victories these past few weeks, but it is to be noted that they're just beating the teams that are in front of them. Not everybody can beat the Lions and beat up on all these bad teams. Some teams are going to be like the Vikings, like the Packers, in which they're just going to escape with their lives. The Vikings were able to do this on Sunday, and even though there's some flaws with that team, hey, they're sitting in second place with a phenomenal record and looks like they are going to be making a playoff spot, unfortunately. And just like the Packers and the Lions, the Vikings are going to have some divisional games coming up, which are going to be of great importance. We'll see how they finish down the stretch. But the Vikings, they are eyeing a January appearance. And all we need is one NFC team to sign Daniel Jones so he could beat him again in the postseason. Number six, you got the Pittsburgh Steelers dropping down a few spots because the Steelers, they just got outplayed in the snow. I don't like snow. It's coarse rough and irritating. Whether it's George Pickens trying to fight people or Jameis Winston making miraculous throws, this game had everything. And for the Steelers, I'm not too worried about it because it's a divisional game. You never know. And on top of that, this is kind of the norm for Mike Tomlin to play down to some competition at least a couple times per season. And the Steelers are still in a really good spot, not only to make the postseason, but also to contend for their division. The AFC North is very top heavy with the Ravens and Steelers, and the Bengals are a good football team. They just don't have the defense to go along with it. I think for the Steelers, if they're able to rely on Russ to not have turnover, 
turnovers and still run the ball with that great defense, they're still going to win a lot of games in December because power running and great defenses are going to win you a bunch of them. So no doom and gloom for the Steelers just yet. Yes, they're going to want this game back and ultimately this could wind up costing them the division if it comes down the stretch and they're not able to knock off the Ravens. But overall, the Steelers are still coming in at number six. No panic just yet. And who knows? Maybe Steelers still got to Super Bowl. Number five, you got the Baltimore Ravens, who had a big win in the Harbaugh Bowl on Monday night against the LA Chargers, a game that I thought was going to be a bit closer, but the Ravens, they got it done. And I want to talk about why the Ravens are in the top five. It's because of their defense. For weeks, we've talked about how their defense has not been up to par, but they did their job really containing Justin Herbert and not allowing them to get anything going. J.K. Dobbins, of course, left that game early, which definitely helped that Ravens defense. But overall, really great performance by them. Meanwhile, on the offensive side of the ball, we all know who the Ravens are going to be thankful for this Thanksgiving. I never said thank you. King Henry having another great game on Monday. And again, that offense is really running through Derrick Henry at times. Lamar Jackson is phenomenal, don't get me wrong. But Derrick Henry just adds another layer of a great offense in which you could just grind out your opponent, just give it to Derrick Henry, and you're going to pick up a few yards regardless. And yeah, he's one of the best running backs in the NFL for a reason. And the Ravens, I know that they have some losses in there that are concerning, but overall, to have this kind of defensive performance and to have a great offense going with it, I think there's a lot to be optimistic about. They have a huge showdown with the Eagles on Sunday, which should be a great game, pitting Saquon Barkley against Derrick Henry, which will make for fireworks but as of right now the Ravens they get another big win against an AFC opponent and now we all know which brother is better number four you got the Kansas City Chiefs Ooh, Chiefs that was close they almost lost to the Panthers but of course they avoided disaster we'll find a way professor we always have they always find a way to win except for last week. But the Chiefs going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Carolina Panthers and a huge shout-out to Bryce Young because he balled out in that game. And there's a lot to be optimistic about for the Carolina Panthers for the first time in a while. But the Chiefs able to escape with the win. Patrick Mahomes with that huge scramble at the end to get it done. And there's definitely some concerns for the Chiefs. I will say the Panthers, we did a video a few weeks ago talking about some of the worst teams statistically. And ranked dead last were the Carolina Panthers. They had the worst defense in every single category. However, these past few weeks, they have not been playing like that. And so while I'm not terribly surprised that the Panthers kept it close, you do have to have some concerns for the Chiefs. Noah Gray is doing a really nice job filling in for Travis Kelsey, who has just not really been a huge part of the game plan this season. And again, the Chiefs are going to get healthier when they get back Pacheco and Hollywood Brown. But as of right now, the most important thing is that they got the W. And at the end of the day, all that really matters is the postseason, which they're obviously going to make. They've already had some really close divisional games, which I imagine they will have again in the later half of this season in the final six games. They have the Raiders this Friday, who they should be able to take care of business with. But at the end of the day, Chiefs get another win. Wasn't pretty. But hey, one step closer to January, where the real season begins. Number three, you got the Philadelphia Eagles. Welcome to the top three, Eagles, because boy, oh boy, you dominated the LA Rams. And Eagles fans, they got to be head over heels for Saquon Barkley. I love you. I love you in every universe. 255 yards on Sunday night as Saquon Barkley just took control of that game. Defense absolutely dominated Matthew Stafford and the offensive line. And the Eagles are looking like a tough team heading into December. Their defense has been playing phenomenally well. We've talked about Mitchell and, of course, Cooper DeGene on this show that they addressed the secondary, which was their biggest problem last year. And the Eagles are just playing really good football. And the biggest difference besides coordinators this year is the fact that they can rely on their defense and 
and they could just give the ball to Saquon in that second half. The first half is not really that great, but they're grinding teams down with that aggressive defense, with that pass rush, and then just giving the ball to Saquon. They're going to find ways to win that game after they control time possession for the majority of the second half. And so they were able to curb anything the Rams offense threw at them. And ultimately, the Eagles are looking like a very scary football team. I know everybody's waiting to see if that postseason matchup between the Lions and Eagles is going to come to fruition because that would be a fantastic ball game. I think they're the second best team in the NFC as of right now. And so because of that, they're coming in at number three. Number two, you got the Buffalo Bills. The Bills, after beating the Chiefs, Bill's Mafia got to enjoy their bye week. We had a very good week this week, boss. And what's crazy about the Bills is that they could actually clinch the division. If the Dolphins lose to the Packers on Thursday and the Bills beat up the 49ers on Sunday Night Football, they have already clinched the AFC East. The Jets, we know they ain't doing anything. The Patriots, they're rebuilding. And the Dolphins, they're trying to find some life. And I think that Thursday game is going to be really good against the Packers. But the Bills have everything in front of them. Once they clinch the division, which I ultimately think they will do sooner rather than later, then they can set their eyes on trying to capture the one seed as they are the only team to beat the Chiefs. They just need the Chiefs to lose another game or so. And the Bills with Matt Milano coming back are going to be even better, especially on defense. Josh Allen is playing really well. And if they're able to have that balanced attack on offense, the Bills ceiling is really damn high. Of course, we'll see what happens when we get to the postseason. But for the Bills, the season could not have gone any better besides some injuries. They're sitting in the driver's seat and at number two. And number one, you got the Detroit Lions continuing their dominance, and the Lions' confidence is sky high. I am the greatest. I am the greatest. I am the greatest. I am the greatest! The Lions taking care of business against the Indianapolis Colts. Their fans just swarming Indianapolis. It basically felt like a Detroit home game, really stopping anything Anthony Richardson was trying to do, though his receivers were doing that too by just dropping the ball, but not allowing a single touchdown. Of course, some issues with the Lions that they did deal with some injuries. David Montgomery got banged up. Decker got banged up in that game. But ultimately, the Lions, they are still in the driver's seat and I think are playing like the best team in football. Yes, they're beating up on teams that maybe might not be so great, but they're beating the teams that are in front of them and they're doing it in decisive fashion. Whether it's their run game with Gibbs and Monty, whether it's Jared Goff playing really efficient football, that offense is moving and grooving. And again, while there's some concerns with the injuries, they're going to be playing on Thursday against the Chicago Bears who have had a little bit of a hot streak going. They're not winning during that hot streak, but they are playing much better, especially Caleb Williams. So it'll be interesting to see if that Thanksgiving curse is going to be broken for the Lions. I think it will. And ultimately, the Lions Lions have everything in front of them. They're the number one team in the NFC. And if they're able to keep up this winning streak, they will have a first round bye and the number one seed. But maybe, just maybe, the Packers will give them a bit of a fight come next week. So just to recap, at number one, we got the Lions. Two Bills, three Eagles, four Chiefs, five Ravens, six Steelers, seven Vikings, eight Broncos, nine Packers, and ten Seahawks. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. Who should be on this list? Who should be off of it? Let me know what you think. You guys find me at TomGrossetComedy.com or at TomGrossetComedy, all social media you see down below. A big shout out and thank you to all the Patreon and YouTube members for supporting this channel. And thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grossi. And as always, go back, go. <laughs>